Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about segmentation. So the goals of today, we're going to talk about what is segmentation, uh, what's a segmentation fault, how does uh, segmentation compare to paging, and then a little bit about um, the Intel Pentium processor and how it kind of me meshes the two uh, together. So first, just a quick review on paging from the last video or video, a couple videos before. Uh, so paging, we had our logical memory, and this is again, you know, all of our um, processes would all be kind of stored, all the references would be stored in this logical memory, or there would be an entry for each one. And we divided this into pages. And these pages were a fixed length. So this had, you know, maybe we had um, a four uh, KB page, and that means that each that whole, each one of these sections were the same size. In addition, we also um, had the physical memory and we separated it into page or into frame frames um, and they had the same uh, size. So these were also 4KB and all of them um, were the same fixed size. And this had some advantages, right? So we have our page pages and we have the page table that kind of translates where they are actually in physical memory. But that aside, we have pages that we can directly put into a frame and we know it's the same size. So we limit internal fragmentation. So we don't completely get rid of it. And I'll talk about why uh, later on in this lecture, but we limit it to the point where it's almost practically gone. Um, so that, that was the whole idea behind paging. So we have our fixed size pages that we can load into um, our physical memory into our frames that are the same size. So segmentation is a little bit different, but very similar. So you can think of a process like this um, in the blue, and this process is going to be segmented into variable size chunks. So these are variable size um, segments. So all of these, here are segments and um, so we'll talk about on the next slide kind of how um, how you might fragment like a C, C code but in, this is just in general what you might you know you may put your your main program into a different segment uh, the stack and maybe the heap is in a different segment any calls to libraries might be in a different segment um, and this now uh, will become kind of a, a equivalent to the pages that we talked about before. So they won't be in these fixed size pages, but they'll be in these variable size segments. And these segments, again, they don't have to be loaded into contiguous memory, so we still have all the advantages of paging. Uh, now, the address is going to look a little different. So before we had um, an address that looked like this, that we had um, the page number that would allow us to go into the page table. And then we had an offset that would let us figure out where in the actual page itself we were. So it's going to be similar. So we're going to have, um, I don't know, uh, I'll say S, and this is going to be the um, segment number. And there's going to be a segment table um, to seg table. And then uh, we're also going to have a, an offset. So I'll call that D again, and this is our offset into the segment itself. Okay, so very similar, just different um, different name for it really, and, and this idea that it's in variable sizes, not this fixed size. So um, an example of how you how this would happen in maybe a C program. I don't know, you may have a one segment that contains, you might segment off all of your global variables. And so then that segment could, so if this is our uh, physical memory, that could be stored somewhere, right? That's kind of a self-contained um, chunk of code. You're gonna be referencing those global variables from other places, but you can store them all in the same spot. Um, you might, all of your data elements that are, you know, pointers that are implemented onto the heap, um, heap data, you might store that in a different spot in memory. So you might have your heap here 
And then you might have your main code um, in a different spot, so your main, uh, so on and so forth. So th it can be kind of fragmented this way. So here's the, some of the additional um, complications, or not really complications, but just uh, how you implement uh, segmentation. So again, we have our CPU and it's gonna generate some address based on the process that's running. Um, and this address now I showed you is now gonna have this S and D and S is going to be what allows you to look up into what's called the segment table of where this address, what segment this address comes from. So now from here, so you know which segment you're in, and now you need to check the offset. Um, so here then, well actually we'll talk about the offset on the next one. Inside the segment table, the, what's going to be stored is a limit and a base. So the base is going to be where that segment starts in, um, in memory. So here maybe we have that this starts at uh, 1000. So the this is the base address, so we'll call this the base. And then the limit, so this is the starting address in main memory. And the limit is going to be how many bits past this is uh, within the uh, segment still. So, I don't know, we'll say, we'll just say the limit equals 1500. So now our ending address will be 2500, right? Where this here is the limit. Okay, so limit is, um, marks the end of space allotted for sig. Okay, so that's the limit and base. It's a pretty simple concept, um, but this leads us into, um, well, okay, it actually leads us into an example. Here we go. I made these and I'm still surprised at what's next. Okay. So uh, here's an example with some more concrete numbers, although I tried to give you concrete numbers before. So imagine this is our lo um, logical address space and we um, have this as our segment table. So segment zero, which is our subroutine segment here. Let me erase that, um, just underline it. Has a limit or a base of 1400. So see that it starts at 1400 and it has a limit of a thousand. So in between here is gonna be the limit and this is gonna be a thousand. Um, so whenever an address is generated that indexes into the zeroth spot in the segment table, we know that its address in physical memory is going to be the base plus whatever the offset is as long as the offset is within this plus 1000. So this leads us into talking about segmentation faults. This part of the logic here is what checks for that. So this part of the logic is what says, okay, so I already have my S and I'm in my segment table. So I found my base and my limit. And before I go and index into uh, my physical memory, I wanna make sure that this offset here is within the space allotted. So I need to make sure that this is less than um, the actual limit. So that's this logic here. So I check this and if it's yes, great. Now I found my spot in physical memory. Great. Um, if not, so if no, then I get this trap. And this trap is a segmentation fault. So I know you guys have seen these before. I know you've gotten them. And so let's think about what this actually means. So what we just talked about. So that means that we, the CPU generated an address here that was supposed to belong to some segment. So it does its lookup in here and it has a segment. So we'll say it's, it's code. 
so it's part of your code. Um, so it's in the code segment. So it finds its segment in the segment table, but then it checks to see if this offset is actually within um, that limit. And it finds that it is not, and so it uh, causes an interrupt. And the specific interrupt is called a segmentation fault. So this means usually, so usually when you get a segmentation fault, it means that you're accessing memory that doesn't belong to you. So you're stepping outside of an array that you probably made with a pointer. Um, so that's kind of what happens with a segmentation fault. So now you know a little bit more. So some um, advantages, disadvantages to paging and segmentation or versus segmentation. So um, some of the big ones that I wanted to highlight here, I'll let you, you can pause the video now and you can kind of read through these if you'd like. But um, so size is the biggest one, right? So page size is fixed when you're doing paging, paging and frame size is fixed. But in segmentation, the actual segments is um, determined by the user, um, kind of. Well, not kind of. It depends on your program and how much code you're writing and, and what library calls that you make. Um, so the size is variable. Um, and also, I wanted to point out accountability. So in paging, the operating system is actually the one that divides the memory into pages. But in segmentation, it's the compiler that's responsible um, to calculate the segment size. Um, so if you could take compiler, um, you'll talk a great deal about this, about how things are, how your code is actually segmented into different um, sections and how, you know, the, the compiler checks to make sure that all of your code is correct, but as part of it, it will, it will move it into segments. Um, some other things to mention, so we've got speed. Uh, paging's faster. Um, so you got smaller chunks of memory, it's, it's, it's just faster. Um, and then fragmentation is what I said I'd talk about later. So um, in here, so paging can cause internal fragmentation. Um, in the paging uh, lecture, you know, I made the claim that it doesn't. And for the most part, that's true. Where internal fragmentation can happen is if you have a program that you are cutting into pages and if the size of the program is not divisible 100% um, by the actual page size. So maybe in this last um, page, you only have, uh, you know, two kilobytes or two megabytes of space used. Um, and you have this kind of this gap here where this is not used. So it can happen, but it's, it's more rare. Um, or it's maybe not as rare, but it, it, is for a very small majority, small minority of the actual pages, you'll see this internal fragmentation. Um, in segmentation, this can cause um, external segmentation because again, we're using this variable size, so you have to find places free in memory, in main memory, um, to put these. And so if you start filling up your main memory, like we saw in contiguous memory allocation, so you fill up something here, fill up something here. The next thing to come in may be this size, and it may not fit there, and it definitely won't fit there. So now um, you have this external um, fragmentation. Um, so I'll let you read through the rest of these. Those are the big ones to mention. Um, so then a little bit about the Intel Pentium processor. So it just, it uses actually both segmentation and paging. So it has a segmentation unit um, here. So you have your logical addresses generated. You have your segmentation unit um, that kind of segments it into different, or it, it houses um, different segments. It has a segment table that you can do a lookup on. Um, but then you, from that, you'll generate your linear address, and then you can go into the paging unit, and then finally into physical memory. So some operating systems utilize this heavily, so Intel Pentium allows for it, so some OSs actually use this, uh, but some don't as much. So the Linux kernel actually uses the segmentation very minimally, so it will segment out some things, but for the most part, 
it will kind of bypass the segmentation unit and just use and heavily use the paging unit um, for its uh, memory management. So at this point, I'd like to ask if you have any questions, please let me know um, if I can clarify anything and uh, thank you.